Hey, what's up guys? This is Church of Caboose and today's video is all about leveling. How to level up, what things are different, how things are working now, because I know we got lots of folks coming back from Destiny 1 that perhaps aren't even used to Destiny 2, and those that are maybe used to Destiny 2, we've even had some changes in how leveling up has worked between uh, Shadowkeep and now. So we're going to have a part that's all about um, like different terms and not terminologies and things you should just really know when it comes to leveling up and how to like what what to expect and know from those different changes then we're going to have some other parts we're going to have a part for folks that are leveling up with multiple characters and we're going to have a part for folks that are leveling up with one character because um in my opinion how you approach both is really different i think you guys are going to find this video to be really useful because when i watch other people's videos oftentimes especially with powering up lots of assumptions are made that folks know uh about what they know with like leveling up and what's going on in the game there's all kinds of things like um numbers and math and oversaturation of details that occur and so i really think you guys are going to like this video because i'm going to try and make it very very useful without it being super overwhelming now if you guys do enjoy the video please click the like button and share this video with your friends this video should be useful as far as its information goes for at least the whole year of beyond light and so this is something you could probably save and use for future reference and in, in seasons between now and uh uh whatever the, the witch queen the next one that comes out in fall of 2021 also subscribe to my channel i would love i love seeing that notification pop up on my phone it means the world to me and i have all kinds of goals so make sure you guys subscribe to my channel it's also a way of showing me what kinds of content people really appreciate so if you really like this kind of thing it helps me to know hey folks like this kind of content and lastly if you are a newish player or just are looking for some people to play with or maybe you want to be in one of my videos make sure you guys join the vengeful discord server we are able to host folks for clans for xbox playstation and pc um and so like, if you want to be in a clan or just have an lfg option go ahead and make sure you guys join into our discord server there is a link down below all right now for the timestamp, i want to leave this up here for probably 10 to 20 seconds just so you guys got plenty of time if you want to jot notes down on your phone about what you want to pay attention to and also i really love this background music and uh, frankly i want to show it off because i think you guys will like it as well so for those of you that are going to catch me on the first segment of what you should just know in general about leveling up i'll see you guys in about 20 seconds this part of the video of general must knows because we have lots of folks that are either brand new to destiny or we have folks that are have been gone from destiny 2 for a while folks that have played destiny 1 and are now coming back because of beyond light and they're excited about for whatever reason so i just kind of seemed to make a lot of sense to kind of give you guys things you really should know when it comes to powering up because even if you decide hey this video is garbage and you watch somebody else's video they're probably going to use some terms but most likely won't define what they are and so i'm going to kind of explain a lot of that stuff here so the first things you guys should make sure you know is that there are different levels of rewards um, so that we have powerful rewards and we've got pinnacle rewards now pinnacle rewards are going to be the highest like best and only way to hit the max possible gear power and then we've got powerful rewards which are the next tier they get you up to that pinnacle peak peak but not past it so you can use powerful rewards for everything up to the pinnacle which is called the hard cap and we'll get into that part next um, but the, those are the two main differences you got powerful rewards and you've got pinnacle rewards now those go into different leveling caps um, so you've got a soft cap a hard cap and a gear cap the soft cap is going to be what you can get to power wise for your gear 
without using any kind of powerful or pinnacle reward. You just can play and what's the about the highest you can get to without doing a single thing for powerful rewards or higher. And in this current year of Beyond Light, that is 1200. So if you watch future sections of this video, there's gonna be a lot of talk about 1200 and how to best use your rewards around that whole system. Now we have the hard cap of 1250. The episode between 1200 and 1250, you have to use powerful rewards. Blue rewards, which is common gear, will drop it around your light level. They might give you like tiny, tiny little boosts here and there, but really the only way to reliably go from 1,200 power to 1,250 power is from powerful rewards. And you can find these things on uh, different locations. They're usually associated as powerful rewards on weekly bounties. There's powerful rewards for doing so many bounties for each of the vendors in the tower, specifically uh, the Crucible vendor, Lord Shax, uh, the Strikes vendor, Zavala or Vanguard, and then the Drifter vendor, which is for, Ga or excuse me, the Gambit vendor, which is the Drifter. And each one of those has you do so many bounties for them, and you turn them in, then you will get a powerful reward when you go and speak to them. So those are the main sources of powerful rewards of those couple of vendors, as well as weekly bounties. Now for things like pinnacle rewards, you will notice you can get pinnacle rewards from just doing a um, certain number of activities in Crucible, certain number of activities inside of Gambit, as well as a certain number of activities inside of strikes and nightfalls, but for strikes you have to use the same subclass type as the burn. So for this week on November 10th, the burn is void, so you'd have to have an avoid subclass. So if you don't want to use that reward, you would just use a different type of subclass. So that's kind of the main things really to kind of know off the bat are what kind of rewards are there and how to use them because they are prevalent throughout the next couple of parts of this video. Now we're gonna go ahead just kind of real quick, kind of catch you up on some really cool and unique things that folks that have not played Destiny 2 um, or D1 vets are gonna probably see and be like, oh my gosh, this is either really cool or just really different. The biggest difference is we have now a seasonal artifact that results in us talking about things like your gear score and overall power. The seasonal artifact to use this experience from bounties and just playing the game to level up. So if you get a six artifact, you get to add six to your power or your gear score. So let's just say right now, hypothetically, I'm 1200 light on my gear score. My artifact is plus eight. That means I'm 1208 power because you combine the two. So when people are talking about um, like day one raids and like artifact is disabled and you have to be this power, then you know you have to be a certain power without the artifact being factored in to your, your power level. So that's kind of the biggest probably change for anyone that played Destiny 1 or early Destiny 2 where there was not a seasonal artifact because this has only been a thing since Shadowkeep, which is in 2019, around the same time of year as Beyond Light was released. So that kind of concludes this part for general knowledge. Just want to give you guys the terms. So now we're going to go ahead and talk next about how to approach leveling up with multiple characters. So if you are playing on a single character, please go back to the timestamps and go ahead and skip on over to the part that was how to level up as this with one character. All right, what's up, my multiple character peeps? Welcome to the how I suggest and how I am going about leveling with multiple characters. Now we're going to talk very, very briefly about bounty hoarding. I did not put this in the part before just because if someone's kind of new and coming back into this whole thing, it's highly unlikely they were doing any bounty hoarding. So we're going to mention that uh, stuff in here as well because that's what I did. So we're going to talk about that as well as things you could do if you did not 
uh, bounty horde. So let's go ahead and get on into this. I am going to go ahead and assume that if you have multiple characters or you intend to have multiple characters, you probably know what things like hard cap are, stuff like that. If you're not sure, go ahead and watch the first portion of this video right before you probably skipped to where you are right now. Now, when we're doing these multiple characters, you're already a huge leg up. It is by far the fastest way to power up is to have multiple characters. Um, so just by surely by having and using multiple characters to power up, you're already at a big advantage over anyone that is not doing multiple characters. So kudos to you guys for that. Now how to maximize those multiple characters is where it gets um, more of a conversation needs to be had. So the first thing I suggest you guys do is pick the character you either play on the least or you just don't like that much. I imagine the two basically go hand in hand. For me, that was my hunter, because when you're doing this multiple character strategy, the character you play on first each week is gonna end that week most likely being the lowest power. So if you don't intend to do end game things on a certain character, it's probably the one to start off with. And then as you, like for example, I, I've tend to do a day one raid on November 21st. So I don't need to have all my characters crazy high and I, I can't. So I'd need to kind of prioritize how I'm gonna get the highest power for the character I want to be. And so you start by what do you not care about having at the high power? So once you start on that character, you need to do your best for Beyond Light. And this whole strategy will change, just numbers will be different depending upon the expansion or the year. And you wanna to get to that soft cap. Um, you can most likely do this by just playing through the campaign. Once you've gotten through the campaign, um, if you're at the soft cap, then great. Then you can start doing stuff like powerful rewards and turning in bounties if you were bounty hoarding. And if you weren't bounty hoarding, then just, you know, go ahead and start doing whatever bounties you got to do to get those powerful rewards. Now, once you've gotten through all those powerfuls, then you make sure you got all those pinnacles done. And the gist is, make sure you get any single possible source of, re of a powerful reward or just an increase of power is done for that character. Then you switch over weapons to the second character, the character you carry most medium about. That's... That's what you want to then do. Why this works is because while you can't transfer over armor, you can transfer over weapons. And that those weapons will bring up your overall score. So whilst your armor will be significantly lower, your power level will be about in the middle between your weapons and your armor. And anytime an armor piece drops, it's going to be a lot higher. And you're going to see that number uh, approach the power of your weapons really quickly. Um, so, for example, for me, it probably took me about four-ish hours to get to the soft cap and then to get through most of the rewards after that was something like uh, a total of about eight hours before I could change over characters. On my second character, I hit that soft cap in about an hour and a half and within four hours I was already ready to switch over and start my third character. See how like, that time got cut in half? That's part of why having three characters is really useful because you're not only able to power up faster, the result is you're able to um, go and do things like those powerful rewards and pinnacles a lot sooner, which means you can then get through more characters quickly. And then once you've gotten through all of those reward sources for that second character, transfer over the weapons to your third character and repeat. Now let's talk a little bit about the bounty hoarding because I hoarded bounties a total of 175 bounties between my three characters and I had an interesting way of approaching how to turn stuff in and I kind of found this by accident so when I first logged in on my first character I accidentally turned in um, a, a couple of crucible bounties and vanguard bounties it's like oh no everyone said if you did that then that powerful reward from that vendor would then be from the old cap because you turned in old bounties and so from the season or expansion before that'd be the most you could get out of that powerful reward so i was like screw it i'll just turn them all in i already ruined it so i guess whatever what does it matter at least then i'll get the artifact bonuses and season rank bonuses if you're not sure what i'm talking about watch that first part of the video uh and then i ended up finding i got all the powerful rewards right off the bat even from old bounties and so that actually ended up 
boosting up my first character to get to that 1200 mark even faster than it would if I did not have those bounties and did not turn them in. And then I was able to do even more bounties on the campaign trail. <laughs> Political joke. Uh, and that worked out really well for me to have those bounties. But for the second character, I did not turn them in until I hit that soft cap because I already knew it's gonna be way faster to hit the soft cap. I didn't need to save myself the time of getting to that soft cap faster because it's already gonna be really quick. And so once I hit that soft cap, that was when I turned in my next slew of like 60 bounties, whatever it was. And that took off a lot of time for getting those bounties done. Now bounty hoarding in this case worked out really well. It saved me time, I didn't have to play in playlists endlessly just to get the right number of bounties done. Um, all I had to do at that point was then just go into the various playlists and get the pinnacle rewards done. And then I can switch everything to my third character and do the exact same thing, play through the campaign, unlock stasis, hit 1200 power, turn in all the bounties, do all the powerful rewards, and do all the pinnacle rewards, and then boom. Now if you don't have bounties, um, there's not really a whole lot of a change because um, you can't like you know do stuff if you don't have it and so you would just play through as i originally described just don't have to worry about saving on to any of those bounties i would just suggest if you're you want to use crucible um strikes or gambit to try and power up to hit whatever next tier you might need to hit for power requirements in the campaign just uh don't turn in any bounties you finish or at least not the last one that would give you the powerful reward until you are at that soft cap of 1200 and then the other thing would be is if you're going to use strikes, which I highly recommend. We'll get into that just in slightly more detail here soon. Um, to farm for that power, just run a different subclass type so you don't accidentally get the pinnacle reward yielded before you can actually maximize on that reward. So now we're going to talk more about the strikes. I loved using strikes this, uh, this year, I guess, uh, because you can use it to farm for power and without having to actually redeem a pinnacle reward. It is the only activity playlist that doesn't complete based off of completing that activity. Uh, you have to have on the same subclass as the burn type. So for November 10th, it was void burn, so you would have to run a void subclass in order to make progress and ultimately get that pinnacle reward. So if you're trying to farm for powerful rewards, because now rewards just kind of drop randomly a powerful rewards is not the set uh, do three and get a pinnacle you can get plenty of rewards past it you can just run a different subclass type and just farm that out as long as you want to either get your power high enough for the campaign get to wherever you want before you turn in your guaranteed whatever you can use strikes to really power yourself up without taking away from that pinnacle reward everything else can't can't really do that as much without just either leaving a match early or without, I guess, like not turning in bounties, and that's like really your only two options. Um, so the last thing you guys should make sure you consider is use advantage of those exotic quests. Um, we know we have one for the chaperone that you get from, I believe it's from the Exo Stranger at the end of the campaign. You also get one you get from the Drifter, which is for that new exotic power weapon. I'm not saying what it is, just in case, spoilers. Um, I'll just let you know, it's it's uh, called something like um, Stasis Prototype, and it's going to be for a heavy weapon. So that way you know how to save it. Um, so just hang on to those. You can get everything done other than turning them in, and just wait for you to have a power gap. Just wait for something like your kinetic slot to be struggling in RNG, and it's holding back your power. So then you just turn in the, the, the quest for the chaperone, and boom, you're caught up. Same thing goes for the heavy slot or for any other exotic quest that comes out at any time inside of Destiny as long as this kind of um, model of, of power and season rank and all that stuff stays true. And then you do the same thing for your season pass. You use that season pass to fill in all those rewards. Um, the only thing I would be like, hey, why not grab it is that very first level one where it gives you a full armor set and duality just because it gives you duality and you get plenty of armor pieces if you bought the season pass uh, throughout the whole thing so doesn't really matter a whole lot but outside of that initial package i wouldn't grab anything 
from the the season pass unless it's to fill in a gap and or in, unless you cave to that Pokemon of gotta have everything, gotta catch them all kind of the mentality which I totally understand. So that concludes this part for the multiple characters. Um, the next part's only for folks that only have one character, so most likely you are pretty much done with this video unless you need to go back to the beginning to get, get caught up on some terms in that general uh, information section of the video. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, please subscribe to my channel, please share the video, please comment on the video. I want to know if you thought these were good points. If you were like, oh, this is something new, you're like, hey, church, you forgot something really obvious. I would just love feedback to hear what you guys think about what I had to say and what you listened to in regards to trying to power up with multiple characters. I, I love hearing and reading comments. I do my best to respond to all of them as well, by the way. Uh, lastly, if you are wanting to support the channel, make sure you check out the links and information in the description box down below. I have a shop tagger list because I'm trying to build up a nice, fun studio. And I also have an, am an affiliate with Redcon 1. So if you use the link or code down below in that box in that section for Redcon 1, I will eventually, not right, not for a while, I have to meet so many numbers of sales, but I would eventually get money back and that would, for the, at least for a while, go directly back into making the channel better for everybody. Then finally, if you need a clan, or if you just want folks to play with, join our Vengeful Discord server. If you don't want to be in the clan, just subscribe to the channel, join in the Vengeful Discord server, uh, be like, you can either at me, and just be like, hey, at Church of Caboose, like, I subscribed, like, can I just be here and I'll give you a specific role or at admin or just let them know when you join and I myself give everyone the role of, I, we call it cabooses. <laughs> uh, so that way you can be in the server without having to be in the clan or just join us and be in the clan. We do PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I am Church of Caboose. Have a great week and happy grinding y'all. What's up my single player peeps? <laughs> Welcome to your portion of the leveling up video. If you skip to here, but you don't know what terms like hard cap, soft cap, and gear score that seasonal artifact are, then make sure you go and watch that general information portion of the video at the beginning of the video, because I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you all know what that is at this point since I have already covered it. Now let's go ahead and talk about it. how do you guys need to power up? Well, the first thing is you guys gotta make sure you don't abuse and waste any rewards meaning like don't turn in and get a pinnacle reward when you aren't even like close to being at the the hard, the soft cap because then you're just kind of burning and wasting through rewards so the order i would go through this is so you walk into destiny 2 all right you're on beyond light or whatever the current seasonal story expansion whatever it is you do the campaign or whatever you gotta do to unlock yourself that seasonal artifact. So you wanna make sure anything you're doing experience, experience game wise is not only going towards your character, but also towards that artifact, which will also later on increase your power as time progresses. It just takes a while to get uh, artifact level bonuses. So then you do that campaign and then you check to see what your power is and look up to see what the soft cap is. I wanna guys save you guys that part for Beyond Light. For Beyond Light, the soft cap is 1200, meaning your gear score can be acquired just by playing the game, and I would suggest doing this with the campaign, up to 1200. Past 1200 to 1250, you need powerful rewards or higher. So don't be burning those powerful rewards and you're at like 1000, like 100 light and you screw yourself out of having from that one character those rewards that would help get you over 1200 power so you're better able to do things like nightfalls and stuff like that because there are power requirements for a lot of things that yield the best rewards. So you play the campaign and then you might notice, oh hey, I don't think I'm that close to the cap. My wife is the one character player. When she got done with the campaign, she was at like 1,150 or so. She has something like 50, 60 power to gain before getting to the soft cap. So what did we do? We went into strikes and we played strikes because you get rewards up to 1,200 from playing anything, right? Um, until she got to 1,200. But to make sure she did not accidentally get that pinnacle reward, 
she used a different subclass that would not get progress towards the pinnacle reward. Inside of strikes, um, you have to use the same subclass as the burn in order to have progress, and you have to complete three strikes in such fashion that week to get that pinnacle reward. So this week on November 10th, it is a void burn, so you would have to run a void subclass to get that pinnacle done for three strikes. Um, so what she did was she ran anything besides void. I think she did stasis um, until she hit 1200 power, and then she started worrying about getting those pinnacles and whatnot, and so she didn't care, and so she switched back to the void and got that pinnacle reward. So that's what I would suggest you guys really do. Um, something that's nice this time is that you get powerful rewards just by playing and they happen randomly. Um, it used to be you only got a powerful or a pinnacle reward once you acquired that number of activity completions and then that was it, that you were done. Now you can play, if you love strikes, you can play strikes 24 seven all day long, oh, the whole like month the whole expansion and you would randomly get powerful rewards throughout the week not just the pinnacle reward that you do so what you can do to take advantage of this is you can save that pinnacle reward especially when you're getting close to that pinnacle that hard cap of 1250 um you can just play on a different subclass type than the burn and you will randomly get powerful rewards until you get to that hard cap Otherwise, just enjoy the game at that point once you have reached 1200 and uh, turn in your bounties and do those bounties and get do those activities to get those powerful and pinnacle rewards. Now, I will caution you guys to be a little bit careful once you get close to the hard cap. Now, the hard cap for Beyond Light is 1,250. Once you get to 1,250 for your gear power, you cannot get higher uh, than to 1,250 outside of pinnacle rewards. So where it can get a little bit tricky, especially for folks with one character, is once you get close to that cap. So for this uh, this season, it'd be 1,245 because uh, you're five away from that cap. Do you want to risk burning your pinnacle rewards for that week and not being able to get above that 1,250, or does it make some sense to kind of just instead, um, maybe wait another week and just do only powerful rewards or to abuse the strikes playlist like I had mentioned. Um, the reason I love the strikes playlist is because, again, you don't actually have to get pinnacle rewards um, by playing it. Whereas uh, Gambit and Crucible, there is really no way to avoid getting those pinnacle rewards if you play those, those activities without just leaving the match early, which doesn't give you progress towards ranking up within those like infamy rank for gambit and valor and glory rank for crucible because every time those rank up you also get rewards uh so it doesn't do a whole lot of good to like leave early so maybe strikes is a good way to try and abuse that whole system to get more powerful rewards without losing your pinnacles now once you have hit and you gotten all those rewards done something that is really popular for people to do to power up is to play comp the reason i don't mention this a whole lot uh, at the beginning is because not most I would say probably in my experience the majority of people don't like playing competitive crucible majority of people would rather do the PvE stuff but if you do like or, or, or at least are able to put up with crucible enough you can do comp just all day once you get to that point you've done all your rewards they're like well I got nothing else to do for rewards guess I'm done with destiny for the week ha 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 hang on there's other stuff ways you can power up you can sit in activities and you could play comp. Comp is notorious for ranking people up really quickly. The kicker is you have to be able to get wins. And so if you don't like comp or if you're not very good or don't have a team where you can get win more often than you lose, it's not a very good way to power up, which is why this is really the only thing I'm mentioning it. So if you get through all your rewards and you're kind of bored, like then why not comp? Uh, lastly, we should get more pinnacle rewards. I know for you single player folks, right now it's really dismal. We only see Crucible, Gambit, and Strikes for pinnacle reward options. I imagine once the raid's available on the 21st, we'll start to see dungeons being listed as having pinnacle rewards. We might get more options for pinnacle rewards from Season of the Hunt, which releases the week after Beyond Light. It's something like the 17th of uh, November. Uh, so those should open up more options, 
but unfortunately the really best way to level up in Destiny is to have multiple characters, so I'd urge you guys to consider doing multiple characters. Even if you only play on one, you could just have three characters only for the sake of powering up your one character. And if you want to consider that, I suggest you guys go back and just see my video, uh, the section of this video that's about how to power up with multiple characters. You'll see like my time was exponentially cut with each character to hit the same level as the character before. Uh, it's just it's just overall way better uh, for your Destiny leveling experience to have multiple characters. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I would love to hear your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Was these ideas good? Was splitting this video up into multiple parts something that was helpful? Or is this really overwhelming seeing like a 40-minute video entitled something like How to Level Up 101 for Noobs? I'm assuming if you got one character, you're probably relatively new to Destiny, but maybe not. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, so, and then you're like, oh man, that's so much information. So I wonder if this was helpful. And just let me know if my tips for you guys how to level by yourselves works, doesn't work, you have better ideas, I don't know. Just let me know. Also subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, and consider joining our vengeful Discord server. We are able to host communities for Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. You don't necessarily have to be in the clan to be in the Discord server, just subscribe to the channel. And when you join the server, just let them know in that registration channel, hey, I'm a subscriber, don't really wanna be in the clan. And I personally will give you a special role that will make it where you can stay in the server without being in the clan. Lastly, if you want to support my channel, I got ways to do that in the description box down below. So feel free to check that out. And if you made it this far, give a corgi emoji in my comments box because I'm always curious who made it to the very end of the video. I am Church of Caboose. Have a great week and happy grinding, y'all.